Hey guys, Harry here. Back with another Brit Lane vlog again. Uh, final uh, day on the garage. This is uh, well, final video, should I say, on the garage. Plus part five. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how to work solo efficiently. This is going to be in a few parts because I already tried recording this uh, already once and I kept going, uh, uh, which I tend to do a lot in my videos. But I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try to limp my ers and ands and just basically talk fluently all the way through. So a lot of the time it helps if I've got a beer in my hand. <laughs> I'm drinking a Moretti tonight, so I'm going to try and not do as much filler. It's easy to say, uh, well it's easy to say but it's not easy to do. So first of all, god this is really hard to do, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie to any, any of you guys listening today, some nights I record a video in one take and other times it takes me like three or four. So. A 10 minute, you know, recording can sometimes take me an hour, but you know, it's worth it for the, you know, I, I'm really, you know, getting passionate about this YouTube thing. You know, it's given me a reinvigorated, you know, enthusiasm for Brit Lane even after, you know, doing it 11 years coming up soon. So working solo efficiently, you know, there's, I've worked solo on and off for the last five years. So I've worked one on one most of the time. I've had a couple of different labourers. I've had me, you know, I've had a bricklayer work with me who was basically just out of his time and just used to, you know, labour on me. I've had a, an apprentice who's basically had zero experience. I've had a labourer with zero experience, and I've got my old man who started out with you know some experience, but you know was basically inexperienced, you know, at bricklaying, you know, labouring on a bricklayer. And I found myself having to work solo, solo quite a lot of the time. I worked solo for about six or eight months straight um, before my dad came with me. And before that, I'd worked solo for an odd week or so on different jobs. I'd worked, uh, I worked solo about one and a half days a week at the moment. So my dad has, uh, you know, t on average two days off, but sometimes works, uh, you know, just has one day off a week. Uh, so he does four days instead of uh, five or he does three days instead of five so that's why in the coming in the next year or two I'm going to look to get an apprentice or an improver and just have someone to be with me full time um, and have my dad you know load out in between and uh, just help help out on the days he wants to come in so that's my plan you know for the in the, for the future but I'm going to talk today um, that's what I'm going to talk today about uh, working solo and what I found helps get the most done on your days you're working on your own so if you're starting a new site uh, or you've got a new start you know this applies both try get there uh, on the day before and load your gear out so if you're starting on the Monday get on the get there on the Friday load get out inducted get... see what the work's about weigh up the job, find the types of bricks you need, find the names of stuff, find where all the damps and stuff are kept, all the sundries. You know, just familiarise yourself with the job. It's one th it's one of the things people underestimate the most when starting on a new site is basically how it's how the work wanting doing, you know, how the site manager wants it doing. Because, like, on every site, they want it a little bit different. And no matter if you're working for keep mode, a van, persimmon, strata... You know, whatever site you work, whatever house builder or whatever firm you're working for, every site the the manager will have a different preference on how he wants it. It's just what it's just a thing managers do. You know, they have their own little way they want things. They could have different NHBC men on different you know different jobs depending on the area, and there'll be different preferences about how they want things doing. Uh, I remember one site when we used to work, we worked at a keep mount site for a while and uh, they wanted they had full fill insulation which was nice which would have lent itself well to pick and dip actually now thinking about it um and they want a damp putting up across all the a four inch damp across this insulation so it's just little things like that they said you know they used to say as long as the the hbc man can see you've got four inch damp of your of your insulation he won't look, look down your cavity so it's things like that you know just little things um 
which is now making me think about working on sites for fourth ventilation. Hmm. There's uh, there's not not really much of that where where I'm working at the moment, but that'd be really nice to do again. Full fill insulation, what a fucking lovely thing, you know. It were a ball like to put in, but I tell you what, no tip tapping cavities and cavity trays and shit like that. Uh, there, were, there was even a radon tray around the bottom of these houses we used to build, but the full fill insulation, you just covered it all. It was lovely thinking about it now. Anyway, anyway, well, I was getting a bit off topic there, but anyway. Um, once you've got, you know, yourself loaded out or you've got yourself inducted, etc. You know, when you're first starting a new job, I tend to get half a tub. Um, you know, a lot of time I can easily use a full tub on my own in the morning. So it's not an issue about it going off or anything, especially in winter, your tub's not going to go off. But in summer, uh, a lot of time you want to just get half a tub at once because it goes off pretty quick. And if you're on a new site, you know, the new type of brick or the new bit of weight you're going on, it might, you know, it might take you a bit longer, so always like to get half a tub when I first start and then as I'm going up obviously you want your bricks following the tub you know you want a pack of bricks with it and uh, even if you've got bricks already loaded out you always want a pack of bricks on your loading bay or a pack of blocks or you know an extra bit of gear than you know than you actually need right then so you've always got something to fall back and load out if there's a delay with mortar and stuff so once you've got your mortar got your bricks either loaded out or uh, if you have got a flat start, you want to load out your corners first. I'm not a big believer of using profiles working solo. Um, I find it just there's too much jointing to do, and the, you're spreading yourself too thin, especially in summer. Uh, in summer particularly, there's no point setting profiles up and running in. Um, certain types of work in winter, definitely yes, especially if you've got wet bricks. A lot of times, the only way you can lay them is getting some profiles up and running in, letting the wind dry them. But in summer, in particular, you want to just build corners. Build, you know, set a couple of stacks of bricks at each corner you're going to build. You know, one mortar board, ideally. Load that mortar board up with some mortar. If you can get your tub as close to where you're working as possible, especially like on a boundary wall and stuff, if you're working on ground level, get your tub drop right next to where you want it to work. You know, go with a forklift driver, hold his hand, tell him where you want it. You know, it, you know, I know it's a bit silly and, you know, sometimes it's a ball eight to follow the forklift around. But follow him, tell him where you exactly want it. Don't just put it in the general direction. Go show him exactly where you want your bricks, exactly where you want your gobble. It takes an extra five minutes, but it'll save you about an hour. You know what I mean? If he gets it in the wrong place. If he gets the, your mortar and bricks in an awkward posi- position... You can, you know, easily cost you an hour or two a day just trying to get your gear to where you need it. So that time is like the biggest, you know, that's the biggest time killer when you're on your own is getting your gear dropped in an awkward spot. Once you've got, you know, your gear there, mortar, build your corners up and then think about um, how you're going to attempt running in. Are you going to you're going to load out while you've got your gobbo or you're going to use it up building more corners first uh, ideally you'd like to, you need to use your gobble up before you know you go for your snap so you ideally want to go for your snap when you want to get another tub so i normally have one snap i have a you know either brim a tub depending on what work i'm on i'll get different levels of tubs so if i'm on like fiddly stuff i'll get half a tub uh before snap if i'm on like some straight runs already loaded out i'll brim it if I'm on some straight runs, but I've got a load out, I'll just get, you know, a full tub, a standard full tub. Uh, and then I'll go at it after that. So when you get your tub out on your snap time, after you've used your first lot of your first lot of mortar and you've built your corners, etc., you know, built your pillars or whatever you're going to do, then you want to load out while the mortar's coming. So get your tub out, or if it's ready, mix, asking for a tub. Um, ready mix is a lot easier to deal with because you can just get a tub up before you go for your snap or you can get a tub up just before you've finished your first one so you know it's a lot easier to manage the gobbo doesn't go off as quick pointing isn't isn't as much as an, as, as an issue because you know a lot of the time if you've got wet bricks ready mix stays wet for ages so you haven't got to worry about pointing so you know but if you're getting silo mortar get your tub out then tell him and then walk straight away up to where you're going to be working and then start loading out while the mortar's on its way. A lot of the time, it might take 10, 15 minutes for the mortar to get there after you've asked the forklift driver. Especially if he's on his snap, that's an ideal thing to do as well. If you've got plenty of loading out to do, 
and the forklift driver's about to go on his snap, just say, oh, I've got a tub out, a tub out on the silo where you get it after your snap or whatever. And, you know, it might take him half an hour to bring your tub, but in that time you can load out, you know, do whatever else you've got to do. And uh, it just gives you a break as well to just, like, think how you're going to attempt the work and, you know, check the drawings, etc., etc. And then you can go at it then. So I don't recommend having more than one snap when you're working on your own as well. You know, some guys have two snaps. One of my, one of my good mates has two snaps and he works on his own. I just find a lot of the time with the hours you're going to be working, um, you know, Brett, I find I struggle with motivation having two snaps. If I, if I have one, I can just have one, refuel and get out and hit it again. Whereas if I've got two, I've got to, you know, walk back to the car again and uh, walk back twice. And I find a lot of time, you know, it just kills my productivity. Um, sitting down, I don't, you know, I'm one of these people when I stop, I don't want to start again. So, you know, having one snap for me is, is ideal. Uh, even if you want if you're having two snaps sometimes you might want to have take a break you know in the afternoon if you can have two snaps maybe go for a snap and sit down and then maybe in your second snap just you know sit down next to your wall and have a drink or have a sandwich or something or bring something with you to site so um and have it next to where you're working that's a good thing to do a lot of guys do that um, I'm a big fan of when I'm working on my own, uh, bringing some snacks with me to have throughout the morning. You know, if I'm going to have a snap at one, uh, either 12 or 1 o'clock or even 11, sometimes I'll need something before that. So I'll have like a little, you know, cereal bar or some energy drink or something to keep me going up until that time. Because when you're working on your own, you're loading all your mortar, all your, getting all the bricks yourself out, everything yourself. So you're going to be using more energy. So you need more, more fuel in you. And then when you've when you've started running in, I you know, whether it's block work, brick work, whatever you're doing, keep on top of your pointing. That's the biggest thing when you're on your own. Keep on top of your pointing. Don't leave your don't let your jointing go too dry, or don't leave yourself too much pointing, or else you'll be pointing up for ages before you leave. Um, in winter, this isn't as much of an issue because you're gonna have to leave your pointing for a while because obviously your bricks are gonna be wet or your material's gonna be more damp. So. Um, in winter it lends itself better to solar work because you can crack on you don't have to point straight away and just before you know after you've cleaned up and cleaned everything off and covered over then you can point in winter that's an ideal time to do it um, I used to leave all my pointing to the end of the day in winter when I was working solo and it worked out great I used to lay um, even back before I did pick and dip I used to lay like a good six seven hundred bricks some days when I was working on my own and uh, I'd leave all the point until the end, especially in winter. So I left a full garage gable up 20 cores, all the pointing on it. So it was great. But anyway, guys, that's my little take on working on me on your own. I'm going to make another video, the same style in the coming weeks and uh, some more tips in general. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like the video and leave us a comment. And I'll see you tomorrow with another one.